There is a saying that says futsal players can play football, but football players might not be able to play futsal. I can testify to that. I can agree to that, yeah. (laughs) Hello and welcome back to part two of Yahoo Footballing Weekly, the Singapore football section with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. I mean, Yahoo editor Chan Kyung, and we have Kenneth Kwang. Hello, guys. He plays futsal for (laughs) Kampong Buangkok. Fantastic. Uh, We're going to talk more about that later. And before we do, just briefly tell our listeners and viewers, you're about to represent Singapore, right? Yes, yes. You want to just briefly say what you're doing? Uh, We we are a futsal team from Singapore. Uh, So we managed to get the sanction to play in Brunei Futsal League next year. Next year. Fantastic. Fantastic. And we'll talk more about that later. But it's thanks to people like Kenneth and your good selves who keep the wonderful comments coming every week wonderful keeping the energy going about Singapore football and it's why we have a sponsor the wonderful folks at Starhub thank you very much Starhub you know Starhub has a lot of good deals going on for football fans so you you know you can catch Premier League on, on Starhub you can even catch UEFA and even the Saudi League if you prefer you can catch Cristiano Ronaldo on, 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 on uh, Starhub uh, channels one more thing you can catch is the Lamar Han US Open Cup that's where Lionel Messi plays with Inter Miami. Mm. Could so win another know, trophy. Yeah. So they are on the way to another trophy. If you want, if you want to catch Lionel Messi, go to Starb and watch watch uh, the the open the US Open Cup. Uh, that's the only way you can find out because Starhub has Premier League Pass, Sports Plus Pass, and the broadband bundle. Get that together. We should we we should come with free Netflix and Disney Plus channels. So you can find out more about this at the StarHub website. Brilliant. And the only reason we have that excellent bundle is because of you guys. Every week, our Ooh. audience is growing across all our platforms, yeah. YouTube, TikTok, Facebook. I must tell you something about TikTok at the end of the show. Okay. TikTok, yeah. YouTube, Facebook, and everywhere else. So as always, keep your comments coming. And, and we've got lots this week. Comments. Good always comments. Always good comments. If, thoughtful comments. In fact, I was going to say, you reminded me, mm-hmm. this week... Not tempting fate, but this week might be my favourite select. I said Ooh. to you, didn't I, before yeah, we started? Yeah, me, I yeah. really, really like the comments this week. Yeah, yeah. Really so good we start, stuff. start with our one of our regular commented commenters, Lingesh Kumar, 1230. He says, in Singapore, there's a strange culture where some think that attacking online critics earns them favour with the government or people on high positions, especially those critics who question government actions or those in power. This seems narrow-minded. We are in an era where we can't ignore online abuse anymore. In the past, we tolerated it and it's grown into a more serious problem. Recently, Jared Gallagher, one of our national players, faced online backlash for discussing the under-23 Vietnam draw at the, at the Asian Cup. This can't continue. it only get worse. It's baffling that some are so aware of their wrong actions that they are creating fake profiles for continued abuse. We shouldn't engage these cowards. Let's deny them the attention they seek. Mm. So uh, last time we were talk last last week we were talking about you no know, uh, online criticism that got out of hand. Mm. Like with So Ray Young, our previous one of our previous guests. And I was saying that it's reaching the point that athletes like So Ray Young, like Jared, are almost scared to speak up, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and it's yeah, and that's that's the worst thing about you no know, thing. You are you are preventing people to not to offer a, a different view. Uh, a, a, a view which you know which may be good thought provoking and, mm. and you know and then some people just ah, it's not worth the trouble I'll get I'll get flame online and then you no know, I, I don't want to get you know, mental stress over it so mm. they don't comment couldn't agree more yeah. couldn't agree more with that excellent comment the problem I see is that this anonymous whacking mm. culture doesn't help anybody mm. right because if you want a reasoned debate whether it's sports or anything else you need to put names and faces to the commenters. People disagree with us every yeah. week. No problem. That's no fine. Problem. But whatever we say, we have to back it up. Why? Because we're putting our names and faces on the camera. We have to back up what we say. Yeah. But I think we have a cult, a culture here that I won't say is cowardly, but we're reluctant sometimes to challenge, yeah. to speak up. Because from school upwards, it's I say, you do. I say, you mm-hmm. do. You don't challenge me. Yeah. You don't challenge the authority. So because of that, you say, okay, if I cannot challenge, I must do it anonymously. Yeah. I must create a fake account. And then yeah. I whack, 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 whack. But all it does is you have no credibility 
Because you're anonymous, even if your comments are justified or valid, you still lack credibility because you're anonymous. If you're going to say something, let's do it openly, publicly, kindly, and have a reasoned, fair, mature, public debate. If you do it anonymously, for me, you have no credibility. Yeah. And it's almost like bullying. In a yeah. Sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anonymous bullying. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think, yes, we all have our own uh, expression, mm. like uh, freedom of speech, right? Mm. But I feel if, like when the public criticize, is there anyone listening? Mm. Yeah. If Is there anyone taking this criticism seriously? Mm. If not, it at the end of the day, it's just going back one full circle. Everything's nothing changed. Everybody's saying the same thing. Mm. Just maybe get more vulgar. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Speaking of going full circle, National Service oh, is back topic. again. National Service. <laughs> every week, my friend, National Service goes in a circle. It goes so, around, yeah, goes yeah. around. Yeah. And, around, around but this is another good comment. Yeah. So, uh, Ilhan Sahin, 3295, says, regarding NS... South Korea and Israel have national service, but they still produce great talents and some even world-class talents. So what's wrong with the issue of NS being a hindrance to our football? I think it's just that we don't have a big footballing culture, that's all. That's partly true. Yep. No, but South Korea uh, national, national service is, I think, yeah. shorter than ours. One, and, think, and you can defer until you are maybe 28 or 30 years old. Good which, point. Which you can but yeah. also, I feel South Korea is a 52 million... Uh, I, 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 yeah. I want to check out 52 million population mm. Israel although small still 8 million mm. I think the thing is that they, they have the base especially South Korea they have enough people playing at the base like you said they have a footballing culture at the base that enough that produce top talents that you can you know mm. afford them to maybe not not do national service for a while because they have enough enough uh, enough you uh, base of uh, male players to to serve the national NS mm. and then it doesn't affect their their defense national defense whereas Singapore you know firstly you can't find enough people to play that's the key fo- football yeah yeah and the talent wise maybe also not that not that high you can't find there's there's no once in a lifetime talent yet we find we mm. find in in in, in the current generation. And now, and obviously the Mindef also don't want everybody to go and defer, defer, defer so that they don't have Correct. a proper you no know, proper uh, armed forces. So there's a lot of factors. Mm. And that's why that's why it, it works against our, our uh, developing f- yeah. football development. Could yeah. not agree more. And I also agree with Ilham's point that yeah. I think we use national service sometimes as an excuse. Yes, In this context, it's an excuse. Mm. South Korea has national service, yes, but they have a football culture that we yep. simply yep. do not have. That's why We just that. don't have. That's why I love this comment mm. so much. We don't have the pathways. We have an EPL culture, mm-hmm. as we've mentioned on this show mm. before. But look, as I've said many times, if a kid in Manchester watches Manchester United, he sees a pathway, yeah. right? If a kid in Marine Parade watches Manchester United – he sees a Singapore Pools outlet. <laughs> it's a very different relationship, right? Yeah, yeah, but he yeah. doesn't see a pathway because we lack the fundamental local, local football culture to begin with. So mm. then what happens is we end up using NS as an excuse. You know, ah, well, you know, what's the point in playing because yeah. of NS? And then we That's just add fuel to the fire of the skeptics in the first place. Yes, NS is a factor, but it's not the factor. No. The factor is still fundamental. We lack a Singapore football culture to begin with. What do you think? I think the culture here is like what you said, right? Of EPL culture. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's not so much on local. I mean, there, there are a few local supporters and all that follow the local scene, but I feel it's it's Still not enough. Like watching on TV. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. More, mostly everybody is like watching on TV, not going down to matches. Yeah. I, I feel if the culture here is a bit different, like if like it's like the, like you said, England, I feel it could be beneficial mm. for the local clubs. Mm. I think fans, yeah, fan support is really an uh, important factor. We cannot, we cannot uh, o- overlook it. 100%. But let us know what you think. Mm. Is it national service or is it a lack of a local football culture? Send all your comments too. Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube. 
Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Now, speaking of comments, this next comment from a regular, from a regular, is probably my favourite comment of the week because this is exactly what I was talking about just now. He completely disagrees yeah. with something that I've said on this show. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. Disagreeing agreeably is what we're all yeah. about. And, it, and it's quite logical, his, 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 his logical path. So, Goka SG. 3550, thank you for your comments again. Uh, he says, I remember this podcast extolling the virtues of Singapore Premier League clubs competing in the so-called ASEAN Super League. Mm. It's great to see Lion City Sailors competing in the AFC Champions League group stages and LCS fans travelling to watch these games. But are fans willing to watch another side show by the ASEAN Super League? Perhaps it's time for the podcast to draw the line on the ASEAN Super League versus AFC Champions League argument. Love it. Yeah, I love draw it. Draw a line. And I think that's directed towards me because yes. I, I've said several times uh, ASEAN Super League. Okay, let me justify what I said before first and for the benefit of listeners and viewers. Mm. In the past, I have said that I would consider the possibility of an ASEAN Super League. But it's very different. And I actually agree with the comment on this. I really do, which is this. Ideally, you would just have a vibrant domestic league like the Singapore Premier League or the mm. English Premier League and then you'd have a vibrant continental league mm. like the UEFA Champions League or the AFC here. The difference here is we don't have the first one. We don't have a vibrant domestic league. We don't have enough interest and more importantly, we don't have any jeopardy for anyone outside of the top two fighting for the title. Yeah, yeah. We don't have relegation. We don't have anything that we're fighting for. So all I suggested was that ASEAN Super League might be a way to sustain more interest if the top four teams or top six teams were competing for qualification to an ASEAN Super League until right at the very end. Ideally, we wouldn't need it. Ideally, a strong Singapore Premier League and a strong AFC would be enough. And maybe if Lion City Sailors do well, that will generate interest in the AFC and then perfect. We don't need it. But as it stands, I'm open to anything that triggers more interest in a local game. Yeah. That's all. And we could, I mean, I was thinking if, you know, you say that uh, if you put in ASEAN Super League, it's going to be a big strain on the calendar. You could just take out the Singapore Cup mm. and then there's, there's space for you to play. But obviously, um, Sing FAS wouldn't want to take out the Singapore Cup. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of it. So so I think, like like you say, that if, if, if that... Uh, one season, a few clubs go and play. Like the if if you set up the ASEAN Super League by itself, the top clubs in the Singapore, Malaysia, maybe Indonesia, maybe uh, Vietnam or Cambodia, they can form together to on the Super League for that season only, and mm. then they don't play the Singapore Premier League. Maybe that that might might do something. Mm. I'm but, just open to yeah. anything at yeah. this point that generates interest. Yeah. What about you? <sighs> I feel maybe. You know, uh, can I take an example? Yeah, like sure. In for like Indonesia, mm -hmm. you know, okay, uh, maybe the people in Indonesia, you know, they they might be, you know, some of them might be less fortunate than Singaporeans here. Mm -hmm. So maybe football is all what they have. Mm -hmm. So they will, f from the inner self, they will try to fight everything for for football, their passion or their might be their career. Mm -hmm. But in Singapore, we are spoiled for choices. <laughs> so you know, uh, we have that. We have that feeling that ah, if I don't do well, this I have another trick. I have another way. I have another thing to do. Hmm. If I don't do well, I can do another thing. So there is no a uh, real sense of drive. drive. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. True. I think this is one of the this is one of the things that is that is in our culture. You know, because we are spoiled for choices. We, no, I agree. We you know we have so many things that we can do. You know, we we if the one doesn't work out, ah, I try another one. Ah. Hmm. So there is no. There's no like hundred percent. Oh, I need to go. No, all no. Here. It's, all it's a working class sport. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a working class sport. It's in a sport that used to escape the kampong or the housing estate or the favela in Brazil yeah, 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 or yeah, the yeah, beach yeah. and so on. And we don't have that drive because we don't have that need anymore mm. to escape poverty in yeah. inverted commas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the that's another issue for Singapore. But having said that, Britain is an affluent nation. Australia is an affluent nation. But Korea is an affluent nation. Japan is an they affluent have a, nation. They have a long culture. culture. Exactly. They, and it's passed down from generation and exactly. from generation. It's going to take a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. how do we generate that culture? ASEAN oh, Super League. No. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, AFC Champions League for that matter. Whatever. But the point is, and now I bring it back to our next point, Kenneth. 
you're contradicting yourself slightly <laughs> because there you are sitting there saying we're affluent, we're too busy, <laughs> we're this, we haven't got time. And you have put together a futsal team, Kampong Bangkok, and you are off to represent the nation. No, Tell us all no, about I'm, it. I'm, I'm not the one responsible for putting the team together. But you're part uh, of it. I'm part of it. Mm. I'm grateful for that, you know, but the, the real founder is uh, my captain, Louis Lim. Okay. Uh, so tell yeah. us about it. Tell us what came together. So, uh, wow. How, where do I start? So, okay, a friend of mine, a mutual friend, uh, his name is Naga, uh, one of the more prominent futsal players in Singapore. Mm. He, he brought me into the team. That's where I met Louis and the rest of the, of the squad. You know, so before before joining this team, uh, I didn't really have a have a proper team. Mm. You know that I feel there's a sense of belonging. You know, but when I when I was when I joined this team, you know, uh, everybody was very uh, supportive. Everybody was very welcoming. I felt very at home. So I felt that you know, uh, in order to give back to the squad, I felt that you know uh, I should do something that can help them and or help to achieve stuff that they have always dreamed of in futsal. So how do you get to know that there's a place, you know, there's a Brunei uh, futsal league which you all can take part in? Wow, Did so, they invite you or? No, so this dates back to earlier this year in March where I invited one of the top Indonesian futsal teams, uh, Pendekar United, mm -hmm. to Singapore because at that point, at that time, uh, Ricardino was so the world-renowned futsal player, Ricardino was part of the squad. So when they came down, they did master class and they did exhibition game, which that was the really first proper futsal game that my team has ever played. How did you get on? How did I get on? How did your team do? Ah, uh, we we lost badly. Okay, all right, <laughs> fair, fair enough. Fair enough. enough. But, but you took part. Yeah. Yeah, we. This is uh, it's not about the score. It's more of the you know, this is really proper futsal, mm -hmm. and we have to educate the Singapore public, like what is futsal really is. Well, because briefly, tell us the differences because even I'm not that familiar. I played five-a-side. What is the basic differences between five-a-side and futsal? Okay, so five-a-side, right, uh, they, they play with the normal size five ball mm -hmm. and the rules are practically like football, but just on a smaller pitch and lesser people. But futsal is different. Futsal, you play with a size four and the rules are completely different. The uh, Regarding the substitutions, it's a rolling sub. Okay. You can sub even in the game. Even in the game, you can have substitutions, but uh, and there's a rule that you can only pass to the keeper one time. Oh, okay. yes, in your own half, one time, unless unless the ball indirectly touches the opponent and touches you, and the keeper can has the ball. But mm. if player A pass to keeper, keeper cannot pass back to player A. Mm. Oh, okay. Yes, you have to pass to player B, and that's it. Okay, okay. Unless oh, wow. the ball crosses the other half and comes back, yeah, then it's another matter. Right. And the goalkeeper only has four seconds when he holds the ball right. to... to mm. So my question would to you would be, I've played futsal once, I was terrible. I'm too <laughs> tall and I'm too slow. Singaporeans were running rings around me. Right. Looking at it from a very superficial level, mm -hmm. it's short-sighted games, it doesn't take up much space, it rewards people of a more diminutive physique, low center of gravity and so on. It would be ideal, perfectly suited, you would think, to Singaporeans. Yes. Should we be putting more emphasis on futsal in yes. Singapore? Uh, one of the pros, one of the pros of playing futsal is, you know, you don't have to find so many people. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. like all as much space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's a big plus. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I give one example, Spain. Spain has a very, very good futsal foundations. And because uh, that time when Pendeca United came down, they had the ex-coach who is from Spain, Alvaro mm -hmm. Martinez. Mm -hmm. So he, we were talking and he was telling me about how Spain's football culture. So when, they, when the kids are young, all of them, most of them will have a futsal Correct. foundation before they transit into their footballing or futsal well, career. We should do the same because we, they yes, develop because quick one-touch passing. There is a saying that says futsal players can play football, but football players might not be able to play futsal. I can testify I, I can, to that. I can agree to that, yeah. <laughs> yes, so uh, futsal has a system that that is very unique to itself, which help, which keeps uh, the players always moving on the ball, always always thinking, always always passing the ball, always movement, which is which is very critical in tight spaces, mm. which can help develop your your technique on the ball, off the ball, you know, yeah, your quick thinking, which is very very uh important to to players uh, mm. when they when they when they play. The game. It'd be a perfect grounding yeah. for Singapore footballers, yeah, wouldn't it? To start start off from there and then before, you know, progressing to you know 
truly 11 aside football. Yeah, yeah, the only issue now is the lack of venue. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Here we go. So where do you play? I know we now train at uh, Woodlands Home okay. Ground Sports. Yeah. Oh, great. So just briefly tell our listeners and viewers what happens next. So you're going to take part in this tournament? Yes, for it's a, it's a league. So the season is supposed due to schedule in next year, May. Okay. So for so about all preparing, huh? preparing yeah, yeah, it's in the training phase. So we have a coach and a proper coach. And if anybody wants to play futsal, what should they do? Where should they go? Well, where should they go? <laughs> the good question. Should they contact? Uh, have you got a Facebook page no, no, or something? Uh, home ground, home ground hosts uh, weekly sessions like futsal sessions in Woodlands. In Woodlands, yeah, oh, every cool. Thursday and I think Friday they have a group chat. Okay, great. Okay. Get down to Woodlands and get in touch with Kampong Bangkok. Good luck. Good luck representing thank Singapore. Yeah, thank you. Thank best. you. And speaking best. of representing Singapore, <laughs> yeah. Alderex Nagata. Yep, that's going to be story for huge story. Are going to become a Singaporean you know, team. Alderex Nagata since they joined the league. Singapore Premier League in 2004, they have always been a predominantly, made out of predominantly Japanese mm. players. It's a satellite club from LBS Nikata from Japan. So they get their players, maybe their B or C teams, come down here to, to play. So it's been that like that for, for the past 20, 19 years already. Yep. And then last week, they finally announced that they are going to, from next season onwards, 2024 season, they're going to have predominantly Singaporean players from now onwards. So they, they only got, can ha- can sign like five or f- four or five foreign players. Mm. And mm. That, that that's it. Which will all be Japanese. Which could be all Japanese they could get from other other yep. but, but it makes them essentially a Singapore yeah. club really. So 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 that 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 is the thing. And then it's got obviously it's got every every it's a big development and Huge. it's got a, a lot of uh, uh players, a lot of the in the community excited because Albrecht have been champions six out of eight times for six out of the past eight years. They've been known to produce great football, football at a very high level. If if let's say you can get Singaporeans to learn their, their, their how they play, it might make them better players. We might produce better Singapore players for if if Albrecht if if they join Albrecht. So that's a, a good thing. But also one key factor, one key factor which maybe is a bit under is is underneath the the, mm. the, the table is that by doing so, um, LB Rex can take part can represent Singapore in taking part in AFC competition like Lion City Sailors. Yes, like they finished second in the last few uh, last season, but they played in the AFC Champions League because the winners is L- is LB Rex and they are not being an all Japanese outfit mostly Japanese outfit mm, mm. that last year, the FAS doesn't allow them to take part in the Champions League. Now they've changed into a, a predominantly Singapore team. Yeah. They can, if they win, if they become champions, yep. they can take part in the... There the, is also our, mm. our terms and conditions for taking part in Brunei. Yeah. They uh, don't, if we win the league, we don't, they are not, we cannot represent them in the AFC Futsal Cup. So, <laughs> oh, see, that's, that's a thing. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a few people online saying, oh, it's a problem for Singapore football. No, I don't see a problem no, at all no here. No problem at all. Alperex Negata becoming a Singaporean club is not a problem for Singapore football. No, yeah. no. It's a problem for the other Singaporean clubs. Yes. Why? Because yes, what have we heard Island. for years? What have we heard for years? Ah, it's only because they get the best from Japan. If we could get the best from Japan, we could do what Alperex can do. Yeah. Well, now they can't. <laughs> yeah. Now they're all fishing in the same pond, mm. just like you. Mm. And if and if Alberex continues to be successful yeah. moving forward, you know, no excuse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You've still got good community engagement. You've still got good uh, scouting, good coaching. Good then academy, there's, good correct. Everything. Yeah. Then there's no more excuses. It's not about their nationality. It's about the culture within the club. It's about the club. How well it's run. I think it's I think it's yeah. a great move for Singapore football. But as always, let us know your comments about Alberex. Right, let's finish on something upbeat, Lionesses. Yeah, some quick quick plugs. Uh, some event things are uh, competitions happening. Lionesses, the, the women's squad, they are starting their Asian Games campaign. Mm. Oh, now no, this is pretty, pretty stupid. Um, they, <laughs> they usually had to. Play, they were originally drawn to play North Korea and Cambodia in Hangzhou. Then suddenly Cambodia pulled out. So okay. now they only that that group only left Singapore and North Korea. So what did the organize this organizers decided they call play North Korea two times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, huh? 
<laughs> so that sounds so, something that Kim Jong Un would have come up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and North Korea are obviously better than Cambodia, so so our, our lionesses are in for a tough time. Anyway, good luck to them in Hanzhou. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Best. And finally, this Sunday, Singapore Cup resumes. So mm. right after the the league finishes, they are starting the Singapore Cup. So we start with the two two groups of S League uh S S P L teams. The the key match is LBS Nigata versus Tampines Rovers. Oh, big game. That's a big group game. They'll mm. decide whether how 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 the group fast. The rest are pretty more straightforward. And then the final will be some sometime in November, if I'm not wrong. Brilliant. Well, yeah. let us know. Good luck to the Lionesses, as always. Hope you get down to the Singapore Cup. Yep. If you've got any comments about anything we've discussed today, send them to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter. Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Brilliant. As always, we thank all of you for your contributions. And I'll finish by saying, guys, this week, my daughter came home from school, two story, and she said, guess what happened to me today? You could tell she wasn't happy. I said, what? This teenage boy came up to me. Yeah? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she, Is your dad Neil Humphreys? <laughs> yes. Does he do a football podcast? Oh, no. Yes. It's really cool. Right? Oh, no. and she, I said, so I said to my daughter, so does that make me cool for once? No. no. <laughs> so I thank that teenage boy for giving me a little bit of kudos. And I thank all of you who watch us every week. Yep. Thanks, Kenna, for hey, joining us. Thank you for having Hopefully me. Hopefully we can speak. Once before you go, yeah, go for yeah. the United No problem. No problem. Good luck in the futsal. If you want to play futsal, check him out. Get down to Woodlands and we'll see you same place, same time next week. Thanks for watching.